it's a pleasure to be back here. I've uh, come back now, this is my fourth time for the UTMB, and it's a, uh, it's a magical place to uh, test uh, my limits and test the, the human body's limits. The yoga, um, more than anything, it's a time for me to slow down in running. It's in training for mountain trail races, training for road ultras. It, you know, always, I'm always going. I'm always constantly, you know, pushing the body, go, go, go. And with the yoga, it's a time for me to kind of tune um, down the body a little bit, kind of slow down and, and take some time, focus on breath, focus on body awareness. And it's helped me transition a lot of the body awareness, the breathing into my racing and training. Uh, when times are hard in an ultra marathon, I'll try to focus on my breath or my form and try to take my mind off of what's coming next, the difficulties or maybe the, the tough spots I'm dealing with. You know, diet is really important. I've, you know, come from <laughs> you know, eating a lot of fast food and junk food uh, in my early 20s and now I'm you know, over the years really learned that, you know, a vegan diet is probably one of the best diets out there. I can still eat all kinds of different foods and enjoy them. And for training, it allows me to recover and bounce back from all the hard workouts that I've done. And, you know, longevity. For me, I'm in this sport. I've been racing hard for 16 years. I'm 30, 36 now, so I'm one of the, the older guys out there. And I think the consistency of my racing and training and performing at a high level, uh, the diet has been instrumental in that and keeping that going. And long-term health, because I want to keep running until the day I die. So I think for a lot of people that's important as well. And I had to transition from road training you know, in May and then transition to the trails. So I think more than anything, yes, recovery time was important, but I needed to get my, uh, my trail, my mountain legs back. <laughs> and I feel like they've, uh, they've definitely come back and I feel like I'm in the best shape. Uh, actually, I've probably ever been for uh, Ultra Trail Tour de Mont Blanc. And, you know, it's an exciting race. There are a lot of people out there. The competition, I think it's the most competitive 100 mile race in the world for mountain trail running. So, um, yeah, there's just nothing like it. Uh, it's a fantastic event. It's a good thing. The more people we can get out exploring their bodies, exploring nature, um, testing, um, and seeing what they can do, I think it's I think it's a good thing. In the U.S., uh, ultra marathoning is growing now too, and we uh, our races will have to decide on whether they can grow or uh, what they'll do next. It's not only a physical challenge with the climbing and descending, but also uh, with the mind. Um, the other thing too is the weather can play a big role in things. It could be warm uh, one minute and it, then it could be winter the next and you have to be ready for anything. So it's, it's a sheer test of physical and uh, mental capabilities um, and maybe something even deeper. It's uh, pretty unfortunate, but some very bad weather blew in, and the uh, race organization thought that with the weather, um, very bad landslides had occurred in uh, on the Col de la Seine, so they uh, made a decision to cancel the race for the safety of the runners. Um, but it's uh, unfortunate for many of us who trained many months and uh, had been preparing and uh, only got to run 30 kilometers. Sometimes Mother Nature wins, and the race uh, you know, committee decided to make a decision that uh, would be safe for the rest of the runners. Well, I definitely want to come back. Um, you know, this year I was in the best shape ever for the Ultra Trail Tour de Mont Blanc, and uh, it's unfortunate I spent all this time uh, training at altitude. So I definitely want to come back, and this is uh, an amazing event, and uh, want to test uh, and see what I truly can do on this course.